Hello. Uh, so welcome to this section three uh, of, uh, of this uh, course in radiation damaging materials. Uh, so in this test section we will be talking about electronic strip stopping the BCA code stream and then swift heavy ion effects uh, and damage production by them in materials. This first video is on the electronic stopping part. So, uh, as a reminder from the previous section, uh, stopping power uh, can be considered to have three parts, the nuclear collision part, the electronic stopping part, and then the nuclear reaction part. And now, uh, in this uh, part of this uh, section, we will really discuss the shape of this electronic stopping curve uh, in quite some detail, focusing on the physical origins of why it has the shape it uh, does. Uh, and I'll again say that uh, in electronic stopping theory, this peak here is usually called uh, the Bragg peak, uh, and the one should not confuse with this with the X-ray Bragg peaks, because uh, uh, although it's the same Braggs who are behind it, uh, they are uh, the two two peaks are uh, completely different in physical origin. So uh, to discuss understand the shape of the electronic stopping curve. Uh, I've divided it in four regimes. Uh, uh, this is not a uh, n not any kind of standard definition, but it's mainly done for uh, pedagogical purposes uh, for uh, this uh, course. Um, and uh, so the four regimes are uh, uh, named simply A, B, C, D. Uh, so not much uh, not much uh, invention here. Um, and. Uh, uh, but the reason to this division is that really uh, to understand the shape uh, one there are sort of four different physical explanations uh, for these uh, different regimes and uh, I would say that two of them are well understood regime D and regime B and C is uh, pretty well understood and uh, A is actually the lowest energy limit is uh, in a way the uh, least well understood and there is actually to the now, I mean, in 2020, there is intense work going on in several groups trying to really understand what happens in the low energy limit. But I will start with the best known one, uh, the high energy limit, uh, the regime D in this curve. Um, and the reason I say that this is the best understood is that uh, there is a theory uh, which uh, uh, can describe it well uh, and to a big, big accuracy. Uh, and this is the Bethe Bloch theory, uh, which was derived already in the 1930s. So it's, uh, it's not exact, of course, and there are corrections like the so called Barkas corrections uh, for inner shell effects and so on, but the basic picture is uh, pretty, pretty clear. So the physical explanation starts from the observation that, uh, um, that this high energy is the ion is. Uh, uh, fully uh, charged, uh, ionized, or highly charged. Uh, that is, uh, uh, this means that, that the electrons have been stripped up. Uh, so if it's fully charged, it simply means that it's just a nucleus traveling there. It doesn't have any electrons anymore. And what these Peter Bloch equations do is they derive this stopping power uh, quantum mechanically uh, for a charged particle uh, that is the nucleus uh, or the highly charged ion. Uh, moving in a homogeneous uh, electron gas. Uh, and this homogeneous electron gas means that you assume that the electrons in the material are uh, homogeneous, uh, this, uh, that the electron density is the same everywhere. Um, and uh, this is, of course, uh, anybody knowing anything of solid state physics knows that this is uh, not true in reality. Uh, the electron density is, of course, much, much, much higher close to the atom cores. But uh, uh, if it, the energy is high enough, what happens is that the ion anyway moves in a straight path. It goes through all the uh, electron densities that exist, and on average, uh, then the electron density is uh, that of a homogeneous electron gas. And it turns out that uh, the average is actually uh, pretty close to correct. And uh, the basic Peter Bloch equation for the stopping power is uh, relatively simple. Uh, so it has uh, this uh, uh, this form here. I won't start reading it aloud, uh, but um, but uh, uh, here you see that the key quantities are the atomic numbers C1 and C2. Then we have n is simply the atomic density of the material. This is of course very well known for uh, regular materials. Uh, epsilon is this electron charge. Uh, uh, 
uh, in this equation, which is simply the regular electron charge uh, E, then I is the mean excitation level, uh, and uh, which the first uh, approximation can be calculated with this simple equation. And then this gamma factor is this usual electron uh, energy transfer factor, which we have already had uh, many times uh, during this course. So this, uh, this is the maximum energy in a head-on collision that can be transferred from an ele electron to a, to a mass. And the idea is that this is, uh, in this case, it's the high energy ion which transfers electro energy to the electrons at rest. Um, okay, now I'd better change the pointer back to the regular one. Um, and then this B factor, if the ion velocity is very high, uh, which often it is in this regime, then one should use the relativistic version of this uh, B, factor, B factor here, uh, where this beta is uh, the velocity divided by C. It's usual in relativistic theory. But anyway, you see that uh, the quantities here are, are simple and easy to understand. So this analytical equation can be uh, easily calculated and then gives the electronic stopping power in this high energy regime. So that was part B. Uh, as I said, there are corrections to it, uh, which make it even more accurate, uh, but uh, still uh, even the basic form is accurate to like uh, one, one percent or so, so it's uh, it's uh, really known fairly accurately. Well, then jumping down, we go to the regime B, uh, which is a regime which uh, goes is per definition below the Fermi velocity of the outer electrons, uh, and then the lower energy limit of this regime B is not easy to say it's roughly of the order of 100 dB, few hundred dB maybe, but this is not really well known for reasons uh, which uh, I will come to when we discuss regime A. Well, the basic motivation to this is that uh, when the uh, Fermi velocity uh, of the outer electrons uh, is higher, uh, is, uh, sorry, when the ion velocity is lower than this Fermi velocity, then as already mentioned in the previous section, the Born-Oppenheimer approximation uh, is valid and the ion is uh, not charged. That is, the, uh, it has the electrons uh, it would have if it would be stopped. Um, and uh, uh, and the, in that case, uh, it can be tr treated as a quasi-neutral uh, particle moving in the uh, material. Well, uh, in this regime, uh, the stopping power is uh, has a, a simple functional forming principle. Um, uh, the stopping power, electronic stopping power is proportional to the velocity. This is a first approximation. Uh, this has been observed in many, many experiments and it has been derived in several different ways actually. Um, by Fermi and Teller uh, using a Fermi velocity argument, uh, which we'll give in a moment. Uh, then the LSS theory, uh, uh, where nowadays very often people call this the Lindhar regime uh, for the stopping because uh, the LSS papers uh, give a, a equation, uh, an analytical equation for the stopping in this regime. And then more modern theories uh, have uh, derived it quantum mechanically. The maybe best uh, known theory is this so-called Echenik Niemine Ricci uh, theory, which was uh, developed uh, around uh, 1980. And uh, after this, there are many other theories which are extensions of this Chenik uh, Niemine Ricci theory or practical implementations of it. And all of these uh, agree that the uh, electronic stopping is proportional to the uh, velocity. Uh, some of the most modern electronic structure calculations, uh, uh, which uh, are not don't necessarily rely directly on any of these theories, uh, they still give a similar result. Sometimes they give an proportionality of uh, velocity to the power of 0.9, roughly uh, speaking. So, uh, so it's well established that the uh, uh, stopping power here is proportional to velocity, uh, which now log log plot, uh, log stopping versus log energy also looks linear in a, uh, a log energy plot. But then why? Well, uh, 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 this, uh, the, the one simple explanation why is the oldest explanation. Uh, and this is one which is, uh, uh, it's not exactly correct, but uh, uh, it's uh, at least qualitatively correct. Um, 
Uh, so this is uh, this is an explanation uh, which is uh, uh, that was given by Fermi and Teller in 1947, and this text here is uh, almost direct uh, cut and paste from their paper. Uh, I, I don't claim I'm smarter than uh, Enrico Fermi, so I didn't want to modify the text uh, too much. Um, so, um, but uh, so I'll try to explain this uh, in words uh, uh, here uh, what this explanation is. So we have an ion with a velocity v moving in a Fermi gas, uh, degenerate zero Kelvin Fermi gas. So you know from solid state physics at room temperature the Fermi distribution is practically that of a degenerate zero Kelvin Fermi gas. So it's essentially this box function of the state occupation numbers. Um, then um, what happens in this uh, uh, regime that if you have an ion which is moving uh, with the velocities uh, uh, with a velocity v, then if you consider when it uh, uh, collides with electrons, um, that's, uh, uh, the, uh, if it collides uh, or gives energy to an electron uh, below, uh, below this velocity, then the electron can gain velocity uh, 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 only by this, uh, uh, by this uh, difference between v and f minus v. Um, and then uh, um, if they are excited, uh, they can only uh, uh, be excited to a state uh, which is within the Fermi distribution, which is uh, already occupied. And this is not possible because of the Pauli principle of quantum mechanics. You cannot put an uh, uh, electron into an already filled state because electrons are fermions. But if you have electrons which are, which are within uh, we uh, of uh, this uh, VF uh, that is in uh, this uh, this difference um, uh, that they are they can be excited above the Fermi energy works by definition all states are free because uh, in a degenerate Fermi gas there is no occupation above this so you can have excitations from here to here and because of this uh, the um, the, uh, this area here indicates the area where electrons uh, can be excited uh, to, to here. Uh, and this means that uh, the higher the velocity is, uh, the more uh, electrons uh, can contribute to the stopping. So this gives them a sort of a simple explanation to why uh, why the uh, electrons, uh, why, uh, why, why the stopping power is proportional to the velocity. So these were the two sort of simpler regimes. Um, well, then there is regime C around the maximum of the stopping power. Uh, there has to be a maximum because uh, here stopping power is proportional to velocity, which increases with velocity and energy. Here uh, in the beta block equations, uh, the stopping power decreases uh, with the energy and velocity. So obviously there must, must be a maximum in between. Um, but, uh, but the reason this is so complicated uh, is that uh, uh, there uh, uh, the the uh, that uh, the, the uh, charge state of the ions in this regime uh, uh, can fluctuate. Uh, that is, uh, it, uh, sometimes it captures electrons, sometimes it leaves electrons to the solid, uh, and uh, this goes on while it's moving here. So even for a given energy and velocity, the there can be several different charge states uh, for the same, same ion energy. This is uh, certain because uh, there are experiments which show this. Uh, uh, if you do a tin foil experiment and then measure the charge state of the ion after the tin foil, uh, you can uh, see that uh, this is indeed the case. Uh, and, uh, and this makes it very complicated to treat this regime, and there is no simple analytical equation that can describe this uh, region fully reliably. Uh, and uh, because of that, the dominant way of treating this uh, is to try to find experimental data and uh, uh, use the experimental data directly and then find some analytical equation which uh, uh, can be fit well to the experimental data. 
Well, the good news is that uh, this uh, energy regime is uh, one of those where it's quite uh, uh, quite easy to measure the electronic stopping power. So there is plenty of experimental data, and uh, this is just an example. Each uh, each point here is a stopping power for a given ion energy and a given ion uh, as a function of the uh, ion energy. And uh, this is uh, ions in tungsten, uh, which are which are uh, given uh, given here. Uh, and as you can see, there is plenty of data points. So one, uh, this uh, solid line is then the three uh, stream uh, 2011 stopping power, which has been fitted to this. Well, um, so uh, from this stream code, which we'll deal with uh, a bit later, uh, it does give data for this regime, but it's uh, not uh, uh, fully reliable. It's quite common to have something like 20% uh, deviations uh, because the stream is essentially a fit, uh, averaging fit uh, to some of this experimental data. Here it is worth mentioning that there are uh, newer codes uh, that can handle it very well theoretically. Uh, and probably the best one is the so-called CUSP code uh, by Gregor Shivietz and Pedro Grande, uh, who uh, have uh, do a, a, a more advanced uh, uh, quantum mechanical calculation of the stopping power. Uh, and uh, here is some examples of how they compare to experiments. Uh, these are not fits to experiments. This is really a, a calculation uh, of the stopping power with different kind of capture, electron capture and electron loss processes included. Uh, in the st uh, stopping power, pro and then the sum of these different processes gives the total stopping power. Uh, so then, finally, uh, I'll go to this lowest energy limit, which uh, a bit surprisingly is the least uh, well known. Uh, well, the key reason to that is that it's very, very difficult to do measurements at uh, these low, uh, low stopping powers. Because when the ion energy is low, it, does, uh, it doesn't go deep in materials. It also has strong nuclear stopping, so it is really difficult to uh, for, uh, uh, measure it and uh, dis distinguish it from the nuclear stopping power. So now, if you re re remember these simple theories uh, like the Fermi or LSS theory, um, so uh, uh, this say that uh, uh, that uh, they would say that uh, uh, that uh, uh, that uh, uh, the electronic stopping power is proportional to velocity. But what would that mean? Well, uh, it would mean uh, that uh, if this would be true down to zero uh, energy and velocity, uh, the, the, this would say that the atoms moving thermal equilibrium, I mean, just having regular thermal vibrations, they of course have a velocity. So if they would have electronic stopping power, they would lose all their uh, thermal energy. Uh, so this would mean that all uh, uh, materials would be quenched down to zero Kelvin in something like nanosecond time scales. And this is of course not true because <laughs> we know that uh, uh, we, we are living at uh, 300 Kelvin, we are not living at zero Kelvin. Uh, so, so it's uh, completely obvious that electronic stopping power cannot be uh, uh, valid to zero uh, velocity. Um, and because of this one can so, sort of make this simplistic argument that uh, the lower energy limit of stopping power must be above the equilibrium temperature of the material, 3 half kT zero in energy. Uh, so, uh, so because at this uh, we know that at this equilibrium temperature, uh, this equilibrium temperature is stable, so there can't be an electronic stopping power. So what happens? Uh, well, uh, there are experiments which show that at low energies, uh, this is a couple of different uh, papers, uh, both simulation and experiments, which show that uh, at low, uh, low uh, energies, the electronic stopping power becomes weakened. Uh, these plots, uh, this upper plot is comparing to the Lindhardt theory, so you see that it weakens from the Lindhardt theory. Uh, this uh, lower plot uh, is uh, actually plotting the stopping power, and you see that indeed the stopping power seems to go zero at the uh, low uh, ion uh, velocities. Uh, this is in the atomic units, uh, this energy scale here, so but we are talking about a few hundred ele uh, electrovolts uh, to a few keV in these uh, plots. 
Um, so, uh, and these simulations here are time-dependent density functional theory. It's a uh, very advanced uh, quantum mechanical uh, uh, simulation technique, uh, which uh, can also reproduce this uh, trend of a weakening stopping power. Uh, but uh, but it's still not that simple. Uh, not all metals show this weakening in experiments. Um, and uh, uh, for uh, for uh, 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 insulators, uh, it's easy to understand uh, why there must be a lowering, uh, because uh, insulators by definition have a band gap, uh, yeah, and below the band gap energy there uh, are no electrons, so the stopping should have a threshold. Um, Metals, on the other hand, they do have electrons at all energies, but uh, if the density of states is low near the Fermi energy, then one can expect that the stopping will be reduced compared to higher velocities where there are more electron states available. Uh, but, uh, but as I said, it's difficult to measure, uh, and uh, basically the only measures, uh, measurements which exist are for hydrogen and helium. Uh, and it's also, uh, as I said, difficult to model theoretically. But one can do one argument uh, which is uh, uh, physically understandable, which uh, gives some help uh, to understand what's going on. Uh, because we can go to this, what's known as the electron phonon coupling theory. And this is a general theory which isn't, doesn't come from radiation damage. It's a general part of uh, uh, solid, uh, solid state physics. And, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and in this uh, electron phonon coupling theory, uh, uh, it uh, describes an atomic uh, and an electronic system with two different temperatures the ionic temperature for the atoms and the electronic temperature for the electrons. Uh, and the reason I say that this is not necessarily radiation damage, because this can be achieved with some electron distor uh, external disturbance like laser or ion irradiation. Laser irradiation can also be at energies uh, well below any uh, ionization threshold, uh, ionizing radiation. So it doesn't have to do with radiation physics. Also, it's a common concept in low temperature physics and in plasma physics. Uh, uh, plasma physics almost always deals with uh, separate ion and electron temperatures. And the term electron phonon coupling means uh, that uh, the how are these ionic and electronic subsystems uh, coupled together with some coupling constant g. And uh, there are two coupled differential equations which can describe this. Uh, so what this has uh, is c is the thermal capacity uh, and k is the uh, elect uh, thermal conductivity either for the electrons or for the lattice, the ions. Uh, and uh, these are the electron and lattice or ion temperature. And G here is the const coupling constant, which you see is proportional to the difference between the electron and uh, uh, ion temperatures. Also, there is a source term, and this is uh, where the radiation comes in. So the source term can be for a laser irradiation. What a laser does typically it excites the electrons, so then the, uh, one gets a source term for the electrons. Uh, and then on the other hand, uh, if, uh, if we have uh, ion uh, collision cascades, uh, then we can have a source term for the lattice for the ions. In many cases, uh, one of these terms is zero and the excitation com completely comes from the electrons or the lattice. And if you think about this, uh, with uh, this, uh, uh, how are these related? Well. Uh, the electronic stopping makes sense when the ion moves, moves much more rapidly than the thermal velocities. But then when the uh, ion slows down towards thermal velocities, it starts uh, colliding with the other atoms around it. Uh, it gives temperature to this uh, solid. So then we can describe a lattice temperature, uh, just like in a collision cascade. Um, uh, and when you have a lattice temperature, uh, then uh, you can start applying the concept of electronic fo electron phonon coupling. So what happens is that the uh, uh, electronic stopping somehow transfers first into an electron phonon coupling regime. Finally, when the electron and lattice temperatures are not, uh, identical, there is no longer any electronic stopping, and we are back to the equilibrium thermodynamics. 
Unfortunately, it's not yet well established how to do this coupling. Uh, there are some old models for it, uh, which uh, by uh, Max Victoria and Alfredo Caro, for instance, which are uh, a good starting point. Uh, there is very recent work just from the last few years, uh, which are linking the two regimes. Uh, but in, uh, I would say that these uh, seem to be in the right direction, but how to find the parameters in these models uh, is not yet uh, quite uh, certain. But uh, if you read the very recent, most recent literature, uh, in 2020, or maybe if you read them in 2022 uh, or 2024, it could be that you will find papers uh, which already are uh, start to settle down this question. But overall, it's an exciting topic. Um, and this is actually ends the first uh, set of these uh, video, video lecture notes. And later on, we'll uh, talk about more practical things about how to use the electronic stopping power in practice.